Hi everybody, it's Elf Gloria here again tonight, and it's now December the 10th. How many more days is it until Santa arrives? Is it 15? Isn't this getting exciting? I can hardly wait. Yeah, every once in a while I just hear little bells and things. And I get so excited about those Christmas lights. And today was a special day because my little granddaughter Addison came for a visit. Now she isn't even a year old. But you know, she learned how to ring one of Santa's bells. I'm sure she's going to be an elf someday. So anyway, tonight I thought because it's snowing, that I should read to you the story of the littlest snowman. And this was written by Charles Tazewell. And the pictures are by George DeSantis. I apologize if I'm not saying those words right, but, you know, I'm trying. In a certain town, on a certain 1st of December morning, Everyone was suddenly awakened from his Christmas dreams by the joyful ringing of bells in every tower and steeple. When the townspeople looked out of their windows, they saw a white carpet of snow all over the ground. Every street light wore a white robe, and every picket on every fence wore a funny little snow cap. And rolling down the snowy street behind two hard-working men who were clearing a path with their shovels was a long convertible, being driven by his honor, the mayor. There was no doubt about it now. It was time for the birth of the littlest snowman. The people dashed out of their houses following the mayor's car to a house which stood on Winter Avenue. I think everybody's place looks like Winter Avenue tonight. There in a yard they saw a small boy, the only one in town who knew how to make the littlest snowman. He was just patting the last bit of snow into place. Around him were many helpers. Grandfather Squirrel held the littlest snowman's old brown hat. Reuben Rabbit had the red handle of a broken kitchen spoon, which would soon be the littlest snowman's mouth. Mr. and Mrs. English Sparrow carried two pieces of coal for the eyes. And Marmaduke Mouse had a blue marble, which would be the nose. Most important of all was a candy heart, on which was lettered, I love you truly, held by the little golden-haired girl from next door. As soon as the little snowman's heart was pressed gently into place, beneath the second bottle-top button of his vest, the mayor made his speech of welcome. Then the crowd paraded to the park in the center of the town. There, the biggest Christmas tree to be found in the fir forest of the far north was decorated with thousands of ornaments and glittering tinsel. The little snowman pressed a switch, and the biggest Christmas tree was instantly lighted by many colored lights. Then the weatherman stepped forward. He was as long and as thin as the glass on a thermometer, and on his tall silk hat, was a weather vane. On the end of a watch chain across his vest was a turnip-sized barometer. I predict, he said, that it will start to snow again on Christmas Eve, and that we will have an old-fashioned white Christmas this year. Everyone agreed that this was the best forecast the weatherman has ever made. Some evenings later, when the stars were twinkling brightly, the little snowman received a special delivery letter by a helicopter pigeon, inviting him to attend the animal snowman's snowball at Town Park. The famous snowball was already well underway when the little snowman arrived. He lost no time in joining the snow ladies and snow gentlemen who were waltzing gracefully to the sleigh bell music. Then, when he'd had enough dancing, he helped himself to some ice water from the punch bowl on the refreshment table, 
and also to some appetizing colored icicles. Suddenly, over the music and voices of the dancers, a scream was heard from one of the snow girls. Look at the snake, she shrieked. All the snow people turned and stared at the large thermometer which hung on a tree. Snake, in snow people's language, meant the long red line which went up and down the thermometer. The snake is crawling up and up, squealed the snow girl again. And it was. The snake was already wiggling well above the freezing mark. I'm melting, wailed a fat snow lady. I'm defrosting, cried a snowman. Hurry, someone shouted. Let's go back to our yards and pull the snow blankets over our heads. With each fat little foot leaving a puddle of water behind him, the little snowman slushed homeward sadly. For the next few weeks, the red snake and their thermometer never crawled down below the freezing mark, and the little snowman became thinner and thinner and thinner. At last, the Red Cross was called in. They built a hospital of ice blocks in the little snowman yard, and day and night he was tended by doctors and nurses. On the day before Christmas, the little snowman had grown terribly thin. However, just when he thought that he would melt completely, a howling cold wind blew into town from the north. The red snake and the thermometer dropped with a hiss. Now the little snowman went forth to wish his fellow snow people a happy holiday. He wobbled up and down the streets on his thin little snow feet, but nowhere could he find a single snow person. They had all melted. The only person he could find was Mr. Weatherman, who was crying great tears. It isn't going to snow, sobbed the weatherman. Not a single flake. Oh, people will never forgive me, especially the children. That's not so, said the little snowman. Tomorrow is Christmas, and it is always a kind, generous, loving time. Besides, I have an idea for making it snow, so come along with me. They walked across the park to an ice cream and ices factory, and there they bought every last gallon of flavored ice in sight, and had it delivered to the foot of the biggest Christmas tree. Now, said the little snowman, and went to the weatherman, just watch me. First he ate a gallon of strawberry ice, then a gallon of pistachio ice and then the orange, and the lemon, and the lime, and the chocolate flavors, too. With every gallon he ate, the little snowman grew fatter and fatter and fatter. At last he had enough, and climbed to the very top of the biggest Christmas tree, looking as fat and colorful as a cloud at sunset. Up there, high above the town, the north wind was so strong that the biggest Christmas tree bent and swayed. Come down, shouted the weatherman. You must climb down or you're going to be blown to pieces. Of course I will, cried the little snowman. And just think of the beautiful snow all the children will have for Christmas. Even as he spoke, the fierce north wind began to pluck the little snowman as though he were a Christmas goose or turkey. <coughs> Flakes of every flavor and color flew all over, going, giving the town the most beautiful Christmas Eve it had ever seen. But on Christmas Day, there was no little snowman at all. Oh, but the townspeople could not have that. They hunted through the drifts, gathering every white flake, and brought them back to the little boy on Winter Avenue. He went to work, and in no time at all, there was the little snowman again, as good as new. In fact, he was better than new, because the little boy had added four gallons of vanilla ice to fatten him up. And then, when the candy heart was discovered to still be on top of the tree, the townspeople lifted the littlest snowman up through the branches and put his heart back right in the spot it belonged. All Christmas Day and all Christmas week, the little snowman sat there with a jolly smile on his happy face. His candy heart beat, I truly love you, I truly love you, I truly love you, 
so loudly that it could be heard in every corner of the town. And after all, as everyone said, isn't I love you truly just another way of saying Merry Christmas? So maybe you can remember that and tell somebody tomorrow, I love you truly. So when you wake up tomorrow and you see all the snow around, maybe you'll have a chance to make your own little snowman. Remember, sleep tight, listen to your teachers and the older people in your house, and have fun with your friends. Merry Christmas.